Autolite and its 98,000 dealers bring you Mr. McDonald Carey in a story based on fact. Tonight's presentation of Suspense. Tonight, with names and places changed, Autolite presents the true story of a man who, to all intents and purposes, disappeared from the face of the earth. The dramatization is called The Missing Person, our star, Mr. McDonald Carey. Say, Harlow, what's that little book for? Why, Hap, that's my mileage record. And it's proved to me that it's mighty important to always make sure my spark plugs are functioning properly. Well, what do you mean, Harlow? Well, spark plugs are the heart of a car's ignition system. They've got to be right. So I see my Autolite spark plug dealer every few months. He compares my spark plugs with the exclusive Autolite plug check indicator. And if he finds my spark plugs are worn out, he puts in world-famous ignition-engineered Autolite spark plugs for smoother performance, quick starts, and gas saving. You believe in top performance, eh, Harlow? I sure do, Hap, and I know it pays. So, friends, take a tip from me and have your spark plugs checked this week. See your neighborhood Autolite spark plug dealer. And if replacements are needed, have him install standard or resistor-type Autolite spark plugs. The spark plugs that are world famous for quality and performance. And remember, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. And now, with The Missing Person and the performance of Mr. McDonald Carey, Autolite hopes once again to keep you in suspense. Approximately 7.30 p.m., the Thursday night of March 10th, 1948, Joseph Ebner, at the time 38 years of age, said goodbye to his wife, Martha, and left his home at 1210 East Bethany Road in Burbank, California. He drove a light gray sedan, license plate 702R3228, over Coenga Pass to downtown Los Angeles. His destination? The Civic Auditorium. Joseph Ebner is a musician first violinist and concertmaster with the Los Angeles Symphony Orchestra. He was on his way to play in a concert. Ebner arrived at the auditorium a little after 8 o'clock. After changing into his dress suit, he smoked a cigarette and mingled with his fellow musicians in the hall down under the stage. A few moments before the orchestra's conductor, Maestro Carlo Finello, raised his baton at 8.33, Joseph Ebner excused himself. He said he'd forgotten something back down in his locker. He turned, left the hall, and was never heard from again. My name is Dexter, Phil Dexter. I'm a writer. I've written columns for some of the biggest dailies in the country. You may have read some of my stuff. Right now, I'm doing feature articles for a magazine called The Real Story. About ten days ago, the managing editor, Brad Luby, called me into his office. Phil, sit down. Thanks. Mm. Phil, how much do you know about missing persons? Like Will Rogers, Brad, all I know is what I read in the papers. Well, thousands of people disappear every year. Some don't want to disappear, and they do. Some want to disappear, and they do. But eventually, they turn up, dead or alive. Agreed. Eventually, 95% of them turn up again, dead or alive. A week, a month, a year, even 10 years later. But what about the other 5%, Phil? The 5% that vanish and are never heard from again. What about them? I don't know. That's the story I want, Phil. Now, I got a list here from the police department. Bureau of Missing Persons. Take a look at it. It's a list of names. Right. Now, you've got your choice. Pick any one of the names you want. I don't care who it is. Well, how about this one here? Ebner. Joseph Ebner. The musician. Okay, follow it up. You try to find Joseph Ebner, Phil. And if you find him, ask him why he disappeared. And so the search for Joseph Ebner began again. A one-man search. I wasn't too familiar with Ebner's case and needed briefing. I spent the whole afternoon going through his file at the Police Department Bureau of Missing Persons. It was one of the most comprehensive files in anyone's life I've ever come across. 
information which began with Ebner's birth in Evanston, Illinois, in 1910, up to and including the color of his socks the night of his disappearance in 1948. Under vital statistics, I learned that Ebner was married to a woman named Martha. He had two children, two boys, ages 11 and 14. Three years before the night he'd disappeared, he'd purchased his own home in Burbank. That's where I decided to start. I don't understand this concern. After four years that Joseph's been away from home, such concern. I really don't understand it, Mr. Dexter. Oh, look, Mrs. Ebner, if you'd rather not discuss not it, Not talk I, I... about it? Well, that's ridiculous. That's all I've done for four years is talk about it. All kinds of people have asked me about Joseph. But why shouldn't they? He's a fine musician. He's, he's gone away for a little while. There's nothing to be ashamed of, is there? Of course not. What uh, kind of man is your husband, Mrs. Ebner? A good man, Mr. Dexter. Good to me, good to his children. He gives us everything. Was... Is your husband a happy man, Mrs. Ebner? Happy? Well, he never complains. He's satisfied. He gives us everything. Why would he have left? I don't know. Are you sure he left of his own free will? He has everything a man could want. Makes good money, good children, good home. Why, why, just the year before he left, we had the music room added on. The music room? Yes, it's his. Oh, Joseph composed music, you know, beautiful music. Uh, would you like to see it? Very much. Go this way. Well, come in, come in. Isn't it beautiful, Mr. Dexter? You see... There's his stand, his books, his piano. Just as he left them the night he went away. I want them to be just like that when he comes home. Is this uh, some of his music? Yes, yes, that's something he's working on. I, I don't know what it is. Do you play, Mrs. Ebner? Oh, well, just a little. Well, I was wondering... Would you like me to play Joseph's composition? Oh, here. It's pretty, isn't it, Mr. Dexter? Yes. But it's not finished. Well, I I'm sure he'll finish it when he gets home. I imagine he will. I, I don't even know what he calls it. Well, there's something in pencil scratched across the top of this page. Hildy. Funny title. Well, maybe it's a name. Somebody he knows, he likes. Who knows? I, I wouldn't ask him, Mr. Dexter. He's sensitive about his music. My husband is a sensitive musician. Mrs. Ebner, may I borrow these sheets of music? Are you a musician? No, no. I just thought maybe I might get a lead on something. Mr. Dexter. Uh, Mr. Dexter. If the music should lead you to my husband... Tell him that his wife and his children are waiting for him. We'll be here. Nothing will be different. It'll be just like it always was. If the music leads you to him, please tell him that. I will, Mrs. Edney. I promise you, I will. I found out that the night of Joseph Ebner's strange disappearance, Maestro Carlo Fanello had conducted the Los Angeles Symphony Orchestra. The following afternoon, I tried to get in to see Fanello, but he was in rehearsal for a concert he was giving that evening. Later that night, I managed to corner his personal manager, Nicky Benson, at the Civic Auditorium. I don't know, Mr. Dexter. All depends on his mood. These orchestra conductors are moody people. Especially before a concert. Did you tell him who I was? Yes, I told him who you were and what you wanted, but uh, well, I'm sure you understand. Of course. Joseph was his friend. He loved him very much. The maestro himself chose Joseph as the concert master. I see. No, or, excuse me. Maestro? Yeah, okay, good. Hey, maestro, this is the man I told you about. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, come in, please. Come in. You uh, sit... He would like you to sit, if you please. Thanks. Now, you, you talk. You say. As I said, I told him who you are and why you're here. Uh, Maestro Fanello, 
I understand you and Joseph Ebner were very good friends. <laughs> More than friends, Senor Dexter. More than friends, yes, yes. Uh, you, you like wine? Oh, no, thank you. I don't care for any. Well, you, you excuse? Go right ahead. You want to find Joseph? Yes, I do. He was uh, perhaps a good friend of yours? No. Uh, then why? Four years ago, he disappeared. Long time. I'm a writer. I want to write a story about his disappearance. Oh, oh, oh. That night that Joseph disappeared, back in 48. Let's go back to that night, Maestro. Did he talk to you when he arrived here at the auditorium? No, no, we did not talk. But you saw him? Yes, when I arrived, Joseph was in the musician's room. I passed through. They all say, good evening, maestro. I say, good evening. That was when you saw him? Ah, uh, yes. I read the testimonies of the musicians he'd spoken to that evening. It was just idle conversation, nothing of importance. The police have asked me these very same questions. I told them exactly what I have told you. I, uh... Understand he did some composing. Ah, yes, a little. He has talent to compose music. Many times I have encouraged him. Many times he has come to the maestro for advice. Did he ever speak to you about this piece of music, maestro? Hmm? No. This I do not recognize. It's not finished. I know. It's good. I think he calls it Hildy. Hildy? Hmm. It's strange. No, this I do not recognize. Joseph did not discuss this music with me. He, he wrote this? His wife gave it to me. Martha. Ah, yes, dear Martha. A wonderful woman. A good wife. Ah, it's too bad. Too bad? You are one man. In four years, many men have tried to find Joseph. They have not found him. No one will find him. Now, I'm afraid, the Senor Dexter. Very much afraid. Now, you will excuse me, please. Of course. This way, Mr. Dexter. And thank you very much, Maestro, for now. Uh, uh, ma you will not find him. The following day, I went back to the Civic Auditorium. I went through the entire place all by myself, examining every exit, talking with people who knew something about the case. Then I had a bit of luck. I was introduced to a stage doorman, the same stage doorman who had been on the door the night that Joseph Ebner had disappeared. Well, I'm just about run out of answers on this Ebner business. I know you've probably been questioned about this thing hundreds of times. Thousands of times, thousands. I went over the entire auditorium, I was... And you discovered that there's only one exit backstage that he could have left by. All the others was locked. Yes, but uh, what about the front of the auditorium where the audience was sitting? Uh, couldn't have left that way. Couldn't have gotten out there. Somebody had seen him. You're positive that Ebner didn't pass you going out the back door. If he'd gone out that door, I'd have seen him. It's impossible. He must have left by some exit. The person just doesn't disappear into thin air. Uh, that's the odd part about this whole thing, Mr. Dexter. Ebner left the green room. Now, some of the musicians saw him leave. He said he was going to his locker. Did he get to his locker? Nobody knows. But it's impossible that a man... Yes, Mr. Dexter, that's what everybody said at the time. The police, the newspapers, everybody. They said it's impossible. Don't happen. A man just disappearing like that. But it did happen, Mr. Dexter. It really did. It happened just like that. I felt pretty discouraged. And I thought about what Maestro Fanello had said. A lot of men... Experts, some of them, had tried to find the answer, and they couldn't. How could I expect to find anything that would have led me to Joseph Ebner? I still had his unfinished piece of music, but that looked like a blind spot, too. I was back up in the office. It was about 8.30. I was sitting there when the phone rang. Hello? Mr. Dexter? Yeah? Mr. Dexter, this is Nicky Benson. Oh, oh, yeah. I I don't know. Maybe it's important, or maybe it's not. I, I don't know, but still it's strange. What are you talking about? Well, Eric Richter just showed up in the musician's lounge. Eric Richter? Yes. Well, who's Eric Richter? He was one of Joseph Ebner's closest friends. What's so strange about his showing up? Well, this is the first time anyone has seen Richter in four years, Mr. Dexter. Because he disappeared the same night that Joseph Ebner did.
Toronto Light is bringing you Mr. McDonald Carey in The Missing Person, tonight's production in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Say, Harlow, what's the best way to save gas? Why, that's easy, Hap. Walk. But if you want to drive and save gas, make sure your spark plugs are functioning properly. And if they're not, Harlow? Well, Hap, if they're worn out, get them replaced with a set of ignition-engineered Autolite spark plugs. Like, for example, the Autolite resistor type. Why the resistor type, Harlow? The Autolite resistor spark plug is one of the greatest advancements in spark plugs for automotive use in the past 20 years. It gives smoother performance and gas savings. And that's mighty important right now. It's the Autolite resistor for me, Harlow. Good, Hap. And it's only one of a complete line of ignition-engineered Autolite spark plugs designed for every use. So, friends, have your Autolite spark plug dealer check your spark plugs this week. And remember, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. And now, Autolite brings back to our Hollywood soundstage Mr. McDonald Carey in Elliot Lewis's production of The Missing Person, a true story well calculated to keep you in suspense. Mr. Benson? Where's Richter? Shh. He, uh, he left when the concert started. Oh, oh. Well, tell me about him. Is he a musician? Yes. Well, that is, that is, he was a musician. At one time, Eric used to play the violin with the orchestra, but uh, he had some kind of a stroke some years ago. Paralyzed his hands. He, he used to come around a lot, see Joseph, and talk to his friends in the orchestra. The night that Ebner disappeared, had this Richter come around? Oh, yes, he was here. I was in the musician's lounge for a little while that night. I I don't know if anybody else saw it or not. I saw it. Eric came in and stood at the door for a long time. Then I saw Joseph go over to him and talk to him for a couple of minutes. Then Joseph went back to where he was standing with some other musicians. I went through the police files and I don't remember... Yeah, I I know, I know. I I didn't say anything to the police at the time. I I didn't think it was important. But tonight, when he... Tonight, when I saw him for the first time since the night that Joseph disappeared... Then I thought to myself, it was important. It was important the night that Ebner disappeared, Mr. Benson. You should have told the police then. It may have been very important. Benson gave me Richter's last known address. It was a cheap hotel on 3rd Street. I went there. The unshaven landlord told me that Eric Richter was in. I told Richter who I was and what I wanted to know. Uh... Please, uh, sit down, Mr. Dexter. Thanks. Sorry I have nothing to offer you. If I'd known I was to have a guest, I should... Oh, that's quite all right. You uh, understand my situation, I'm sure. See, I haven't worked in... Uh, Mr. Richter, I want to ask you some questions. About Joseph. Joseph Ebner. Yes, dear Joseph. He's not dead, you know. I believe as you do, Mr. Dexter. You disappeared the same night that Joseph Ebner disappeared, Mr. Richter. What happened to you? I disappeared? This is news to me. I disappeared? Nicky Benson told me that you used to go to the auditorium quite a bit to talk to your friends in the orchestra, but that after Ebner disappeared, you just oh, went... Oh, you speak and accuse as if I had committed some crime, Mr. Dexter. For four years, I have not chosen to see my friends. I have not seen them, and that's all. I see. Mr. Richter, when Ebner disappeared four years ago, he was composing a piece of music. I don't know what it was. His wife, Martha, doesn't know either. Nobody seems to know. Maybe you do. Here, look at it. Oh, uh, you will have to hold it for me, Mr. Dexter. Yes. Hildy. You know? I... I... What is it? Mr. Dexter, I... Do you know what it is? No, it, 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 it's nothing. It's just... Uh, is Hildy a name? Look, Mr. Dexter, I don't know anything that will lead you to Joseph Ebner. Besides, there has been enough suffering for his wife. Why should there be more suffering? Suffering? What do you mean, suffering? Don't ask me to tell you. It isn't right for me to tell you. Tell me, Richter, please. 
Hildy. Hildy, Mr. Dexter, is a woman. A woman? Who is she? She's a woman who was more than a friend, Joseph. Oh, I see. No. No, you don't see at all. Where is this Hildy? I don't. No, I haven't seen her in a long time. Is Ebner with her now? I, I, I don't Ebner know. Ebner said something to you that night in 1948, back in the auditorium. What was it? He, he told me he, he had found an answer to his problem. And that was the last you saw of him? Yes, yes, I never saw him after that. And Hildy? I never saw Hildy again. Eric Richter gave me the last known address of the woman named Hildy. In four years, a lot of things happened. I was almost afraid to begin my search for her. Afraid of what I might find. But it was my story. I had to follow it up. I went to the address that Richter had given me. Yes? Excuse me, I was looking for someone. This was the last known address of this party. Perhaps you might be able to help me trace her down. How long ago? Well, she lived here four years ago. Well, that's a long time. A lot of people moved in and out since then. You remember her name? Her name was Hildy. Hildy? Yes. Do you remember? Eh, she still lives here. You mean she still? Well, what's so strange about that? Got a lot of people in the building who've lived Does here. Does she live alone? Apartment 207. Do you know if she's in now? And you can use those stairs over there. Thanks. Thanks. Yes? Is your name Hildy Dexter? Phil Dexter. I'm a writer with the magazine The Real Story. Yes? I'm looking for Joseph Ebner. Won't you come in, Mr. Dexter? Sit down. Thank you. How did you find me? Eric Richter. I see. And now you want to ask me a lot of questions. I'm not a reporter. I'm writing an article for a magazine. Still, there'll be questions. Yes. First, you'll want to know if I know where Joseph is. No, I don't know, Mr. Dexter. If I knew, I'd tell you. Why would you tell me? No man possessed of his talent has the right to deny it to others. I see. Then next, you'll want to know... No, no, that's not necessary. Let me tell you how we first met... It was at a party. We were introduced. At first, it was just a casual acquaintance. Then Joseph invited me to a concert. He told me of his family, his love for children. Why are you telling me all this? Because I want you to understand that we never did anything to be ashamed of. Our relationship was a thing of music. Music is what drew us together. When was the last time you saw Joseph? Three nights before he disappeared. Why didn't you go to the police? Tell them what you knew. No, there was nothing I knew that would have helped the police. Joseph's wife loved him. Why should it have been necessary for her to suffer any more? Then there were the children. I don't understand. Don't you see, Mr. Dexter? The others would, wouldn't have understood a relationship like ours. I've got something here I'd like to show you. What is it? You knew, of course, that Ebner did some composing... He had many talents. Yes, I know. Did you know that he'd been composing this? No, I didn't. Very beautiful, isn't it? He named it Hildy. I can see. It was for you. Please. Where is Joseph Ebner Hildy? Where is he? Mr. Dexter, I told you I don't know. If I did know, I'd tell you. I don't know where Joseph is. miss him. I see. Just to see him. 
Nothing more. Just to know that he's all right is enough. It fills a loaf. I understand. Thank you, Hildy. I've tracked down the last hopeful bit of information that might have led me to Joseph Ebner. It still leads into a blind alley. Joseph Ebner may never be found now, but he's out there, somewhere, somewhere at this very moment, he may be listening to the sound of my voice. If any one of you who are listening should ever hear this piece of music being played, get in touch with your local authorities, because you will have found Joseph Ebner. Suspense. A true story. Presented by Autolite. Tonight's star, Mr. McDonald Carey. This is Harlow Wilcox speaking for Autolite, world's largest independent manufacturer of automotive electrical equipment. Autolite is proud to serve the greatest names in the industry. They are members of the Autolite family, as well as are the 98,000 Autolite distributors and dealers in the United States and thousands more in Canada and throughout the world. Our family also includes the nearly 30,000 men and women in 28 great Autolite plants from coast to coast and in still other Autolite plants in many foreign countries, as well as the 18,000 people who have invested a portion of their savings in Autolite. Every Autolite product is backed by constant research and precision built to the highest standards of quality and performance. So remember, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. Next week, a story about courage. The terrifying, normal operational flight of a bomber and her crew. A dramatization of The Flight of the Bumblebee. Starring Mr. Fred McMurray. The story will be heard on... Suspense. Suspense is produced and directed by Elliot Lewis, with music composed by Lucian Morrowick and conducted by Lud Gluskin. The Missing Person was written for Suspense by Richard George Pettuccini. Featured in tonight's cast were Irene Tedrow, Joseph Kearns, Jay Novello, Herb Vigran, Paula Winslow, and Jim Nusser. MacDonald Carey may soon be seen in the 20th Century Fox picture, My Wife's Best Friend. And remember next week on Suspense, Mr. Fred McMurray in The Flight of the Bumblebee. You can buy Autolite standard type or resistor type spark plugs, the Autolite Stay Full battery, Autolite electrical parts at your neighborhood Autolite dealers. Switch to Autolite. Good night. This is the CBS Radio Network.